One thing I've always wondered is where is the Church of the Flame during all this? Surely they must recognize that the monsters in the estate are a threat to the world at large. Perhaps the Church is suffering from infighting. Various factions are vying for power. It could explain the variety of worship and service they offer in the name of the Flame. But there is one who has been chosen by the Light. A shining guardian to smite the wicked and protect the faithful. She is hailed as the Seraph. But underneath all that armor is a young woman named Joan. Joan was born a peasant girl in a small village. Her life was simple and peaceful. She was a devoted worshiper at the church until one day something bizarre happened. She began to hear voices in her head claiming to be the light. The voice claimed that Joan was his vessel and she would lead a holy army in the upcoming war. Joan took this as a sign of prophecy and took up arms in the name of the light. However, the established church viewed her as a witch, masquerading as a false prophet. This caused a schism within the religion, and not wanting to let this heresy spread, the church tasked their best witch hunter, Mathis, to track down and capture Joan. He pursued her from one city to another, preaching about her crimes against the light and the flame, and roused the population to hunt her down. They would burn her out wherever she hid, killing innocents in the process. But it would be worth anything to stop her heresy. Eventually, they caught her, and Mathis was tasked with her execution. And no punishment is as righteous as death by holy fire. On the night of her execution, Mathis prepared the pyre and set the fire to burn her alive. But just as the fire reached her skin, divine intervention saved her life. The light extinguished the flames and burned her body of sin. Mathis looked on in horror as the devoted began kneeling in reverence to Joan. She had become a living angel and a martyr for the light. He slipped away in the commotion, and the devoted watched this miracle with awe. Joan had lived, but she was horribly burned and disfigured from the incident. She wrapped herself in thrice-blessed plate mail and a mask to hide her visage. With her left wing, she bears a holy shield to protect her companions. With her right wing, she wields a holy sword to strike the wicked with holy fire. For those branded or marked, she will smite them with the power of the light. She could use this same power to cauterize the wounds of her allies. While she is a battlefield angel, her face under the mask will disturb our allies and stun our enemies. Her greatest attack is only when she is near death. She channels the power of the light to blast her targets with divine righteousness. She continued her crusade, and the voice in her head has led her to the hamlet. To those who follow the teachings of the light and the flame, she is a beacon of hope. But to those without faith, she is a disturbing iron maiden of fanaticism. You see, there's something off about the way she refers to the voice in her head. If she becomes afflicted, we see that she still has regrets about following this path. More disturbingly, she begs to be saved from him. The voice will sometimes speak through her, similar to another hero in the Hamlet. The word choice he uses is similar to the other deities we've encountered, referring to the bodies as avatars and vessels. Could it be that she's just being used by this deity, similar to the miller? 
in reality, this light isn't as benevolent as it seems? I've always said perspective is everything. To some, the Church of the Light is a sign of hope. To others, a form of slavery. And now Joan is the latest to be chosen by the light. It does make me wonder, if other gods exist in this world, what else exists out there? What stories are there to tell, beyond even the desert kingdoms, to the far east? Would they be tales of tragedy and heroism, or of insecurity and jealousy? Or maybe the lines are so blurred they can't even tell the difference. Thank you.